I mean, I'm only 22, and I'm not retired. Doesn't mean I don't like vacations. So why even say it? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm sure you like vacations. Oh yeah, I do. I do. everyone we just got done we're watching birdemic and before we get into the movie let me you want to introduce yourselves first and last name definitely i'll go first Ladies my name yes thank you my name's cassidy um and i'm back what's your last name you want my last name too it's lasir l-e-s-i-r-e yes and i like to welcome back cassidy lasir because her last seminar sit down was when we watched Creed 2 last year. A whole year ago. Okay, what's your name? <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's me, Paris. Um, I'm just I'm just back. I'm just a normal edition, I think. But it's good to be here. Yeah, so let's get into the movie we watched called Bird Demic. Which really was a bird demic. So, anything you took away from the movie? I would say this was just... <laughs> it was... A movie is like a, a loose term <laughs> yeah, yeah, here. So true. Because, like, I mean, it was certainly visual. Thoughts on the edits. <laughs> there was thoughts that were, <laughs> that were expressed through a camera medium. But it was, it was interesting. I would like to hear your thoughts on it first, though, Ben. What's your opinion on the birds flapping their wings and not moving? They definitely got stock footage and clip art of birds. <laughs> yeah, and the then, 3D motion graphics. Yes, copied cool. and pasted it. They didn't move a lot, mm -hmm. but that's fine. For they two, just flew in, yeah. flew in, uh, flew in place. Yeah, that was about it. Yeah. Yeah, but when I mean, when you think about like the director, like you know, he clearly mm -hmm. had an idea like he, he was clearly trying to talk about mm. global warming and he tried his very you know, best i feel like so often when it comes to the environment <laughs> we just feel so helpless it's like we're just people there's nothing we can really do and he and we all want to do something well most of us people think about it like i wish there's something i could do and he wanted so he decided to make a movie because like we could recycle all day long but it's like when there's like giant corporations mm -hmm. like polluting the earth it's like feels kind of hopeless so the movie was kind of about global warming yeah but like maybe because they said the birds were attacking people who were contributing to global warming yeah but that guy in the forest who was hugging trees yeah the tree hugger was totally fine exactly he had no issues but then they look they were like nah we'll go back into the uh the abyss and then the doves just showed up which was that explained or no they definitely ran out, not they the ran doves just showed up and they told the eagles to chill out which kind of if you're into religion that's kind of a spiritual aspect oh, because yeah. the doves are part of like religion i would say so yeah yeah because doves are like peace you know <laughs> so true so but i mean other than that like what are your thoughts on the audio <laughs> 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 that's that's like a whole thing to, to delve into because I think the audio was like so entertaining because they would just cut it completely or they would play it really really loud but my favorite is when they were the scenes with literally no audio at all I think they thought that no audio would be better than like the massive amounts of wind noise that they probably picked up which you know is maybe true Hello. Here's your drinks. But 
in terms of the audio as a whole, I think that was, you know, not the greatest job. But the ideas were still there. Ben, and what was your favorite part of the movie, though, overall? Overall, it was... Uh, There are a lot of good... A lot? No, well, other than pe birds beating up people, but... Which you said you didn't like. No. It creeped me out a little bit. But okay. there were times in the movie where I I thought they did a good job. Like, I thought it was interesting how they met up and, like, 30 years back went to high school together. <laughs> that part was great in the very beginning. Yeah, I like that part. How they knew part. each other. Me too. Yeah, it's always nice to meet up with the old, <laughs> yeah, high, school yeah, the old high school homies. Show... No, don't show me. Tell me your thoughts on what you would do if you were in Susie's and what's the boy's name? Wait, I thought it was, I think it's Susan. Susan, Susan and Tony. Yeah, what would you do yeah. if you were in their shoes and did, did what they did? Like, you were seven years old. I'm sure you were seven years old at one That's, point. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you were in their shoes and you were seven years old in a birdemic? Well, I don't know. Seven in a birdemic? I feel like... Well, their I feel like they kind of. I feel like the guy kind of did everything that I would have done, which was <laughs> hide under the car or hide in the trunk of the car and then play my PSP. <laughs> he literally just didn't be, care and just at be oblivious all. to the world. Susan was upset for like <laughs> a couple minutes. And so. after hearing Susan's voice, like Dad, I want a Happy Meal. I don't think she really. She cared wasn't about grateful anything. for that fish meal they served yeah, up. I don't think she really cared about anything because her voice said it all. In my opinion. So you don't, you didn't like the attitude of the kid characters. No. The boy was all right. Okay. But he kept his mouth, <laughs> he kept his mouth shut. But not Susan at all. Okay. You didn't like Susan. I just like I thought her delivery of the lines was gorgeous. At the beginning, that she had some good delivery. She, was, I don't know what she said, but she just said something with like no added, mm. like just. Well, it was a nice switch, change of pace because everyone else is like really slow mm. and they would like hang on these really long shots for way too long. Oh my god. But she was very quick with it, so it was, it was nice to have that change of pace. Earlier in the movie when Rod met uh, Natalie's parents, oh, yeah. or Our Natalie's mom. mom. No, that, that I forgot actually, about that. I like taking vacations. <laughs> I like road tripping. Is that, that what he good. said or what she said? No, that's what she said. That was that was actually pretty funny. Oh yeah, she's like, funny. I like to watch TV. That was pretty funny. She just like, kind of started rattling off things. She, it felt like a documentary for a second. <laughs> like the way she was framed and everything. It was like, oh, this is like a documentary now. And I was like, who doesn't like to take vacations? Exactly. I mean, I'm only 22 and I'm not retired. Doesn't mean I don't like vacations. So why even say it? <laughs> Literally. I'm she sure you like vacations. Oh uh, yeah, I, would, I do. Well, we're not on the topic of... <laughs> before we get into the topic of vacations, any other thoughts on the movie? I would say, just overall, there is a sequel that mm -hmm. I'm really excited f to are watch they, now. Are they both rated R or PG-13? Honestly, I don't know if they got... They are not rated R. Yeah, he definitely made that up. I think they are they never got like official releases, so I don't know if they're really rated, but... I mean, overall... <laughs> I think overall, it was kind of I think good. it was good when... I think it was funny when they first saw the birds were attacking. They were like trying to understand what was happening, and then they just went to someone's random motel room. <laughs> just knocked on their door. And that person also happened to just have military grade weaponry. Just oh yeah, they had, uh, they just had guns, guns that literally never ran out of ammo. Yeah, they like. If we're thinking of the right scene, I like how they forgot the gasoline and did not even that think was about actually up the gasoline. The cowboy came up to their car, and then he died, of course. From a bird. Obviously. And then, um... It's kind of the classic they tale. They left the can there. Yeah. It's just kind of the classic tale of, like, directors who make these kind of films. Like, um, oh man, what's his name? Neil Breen mm -hmm. and Tommy Wise. It's just, like, these random characters that just kind of come in and... Do their thing. Out, do their thing, and then leave. And it's, like... It's like so real. It's like it's kind of <laughs> real when you think about it. It's like so mundane that it's like actually real, and it's like actually is more 
of a capture of like it's real more life authentic. than like you know you don't think the bird demic would actually happen i don't think bird demic would happen but i think the way that they that the director captured like scenes like like the way that he would just like hang on scenes for too long hang on shots for too long it's just like kind of like you expect it to go on but it's but like, like how very did real. the bird demic start i think the professor tried to explain that but it was, it was global warming but yeah. like he literally also said it wasn't he was like this is has not they were like oh is it because of global warming he literally was like no but i thought it was more of a learning moment for those yeah. For those I'll be honest, people. the professor couldn't hear what he was... <laughs> I think... The, no the, thought, I didn't know what he was saying at all. I think we can all agree the, the key of the movie was like global warming, right? Barely. No, I think that we was We can like agree, a, but was it like... It was like not... I think they touched on it pretty good. You're telling me that this movie is 100% about global warming. I think so. Cause, because in the beginning, he's like talking about how his Mustang is hybrid and how he can get solar panels on his car and and then it's always and then the guy was like D don't you see people people only get attacked by the birds when they're filling up gas or something so if you had to summarize if you summarize this movie to someone else what would you say i think i think that for the time it was made like 2008 like i feel like global warming was like a really hot topic that people didn't really understand yet you not that we understand it too much better now but like i said it's feel, people just feel like felt like they wanted to do something about it but you can't you know because you're just a person so you have to make a movie about birds to spread awareness but if someone was like yo i'm thinking about watching birdemic what's it about it's about global warming and birds <laughs> that attack people because <laughs> of global warming hey right this away. this movie was so irrelevant like the first half <laughs> was so irrelevant that's true to the literally title. they are two I think, separate I think movies if I have one critique is they drew on the first half a little too much but that's kind of like how i was saying like it's like life it's like you don't yeah. expect these it's things so to, true to it's real like, life you know like, you don't expect these things to happen it's it, like a normal life and then it, it would happens. be cool if i if 30 years from now i see a high school friend <laughs> And this happens. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. But I then, just, it's yeah. not realistic to uh, have a bird pandemic with them. That's no. not realistic. I mean, you never say never, but I would probably agree with you. I just want to say that this movie wasn't good. You but it so. was... No, it, it but was, it was so bad that it was good. It was creepy to me, but at the same time, it was very funny. I definitely would, like, watch it again. Yeah, I, I laughed, so I thought it was funny. I it was funny, definitely. Yeah. But it's not like a good movie, but it's it good be. in a, like a bad way. It could, you know, I'm starting to really think after watching movies like this that these movies actually are just good. <laughs> because like... Why? Because they're good. Like, it's just viewing cinema through a different lens. It's, but like, it's not that deep. <laughs> but it could it's be. It's just not it that could deep. Be. Like, like overall, I said, like I said, like this is like real life. Like they're like no, it's, it's like not. it's like blurring the line between documentary and it's, you cannot tell me that this movie was anything close to a documentary. <laughs> it was the, for the first half was like real because it's like this guy who like works in software. Be serious. But I could about the second half of the movie yeah. i could really tell that was just a video board and they were imagining yeah. it was real because yeah. the birds really did not go anywhere near them no yeah, way you could tell that was definitely green screen or <laughs> cgi never did those birds they flew away in the distance at the end for like 10 minutes yeah and they didn't even move <laughs> at all i like a lot of the transitions you can tell the cross dissolves where they just kind of left the clip too long i just don't understand why you won't admit any of you that this movie technically sucks okay like on paper Listen. this movie sucks no, it just doesn't. admit it, it I, it's I'm fine not... i liked the movie but we can admit that this movie is technically this is bad. the same debate that we have every time we watch a movie like this and i'm just always gonna say that you're acting it like this Loki good. has such a deep meaning it does i think it does it has a deep meaning and it's good because like i said it's like it's it's real life it's you know <laughs> it is not it's real like life. A, what's the word you know experimental okay mm. you so you noticed you noticed the cgi and everything so you, you don't think the, the effects were very good no special not effects. at all and no. in the first tar in the first half of the movie when 
Natalie and Rod yeah. were at the restaurant. Yeah. I could tell they had some uh, audio issues. Oh, yeah. They had audio well, issues the whole the movie. Whole movie. Yeah. But they were, like, so bad that it kind of made it good. See, this is what I'm saying. It's technically bad, but it's still good. Sure. I know you You just mean. need to admit that that's but a it's fact. It's also technically bad, but technically good, which makes it technically exactly. good. You know, one of those scenes, the scene that I thought was in the movie and you said it wasn't. <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> but We're not sure. that scene is reminding me of a Drake and Josh episode. Nice. Which one? The one where, they, where they're going to the wedding and yes. the car breaks down? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that one with Oprah where he runs over Oprah? No, they're going to oh. a, they're going to a wedding and they have a cake yeah, in the back. Craig and, yeah, and Craig and Eric yep. took their cell phones. Yep. Yep. You always find Drake and Josh and references. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh. Okay. You're not gonna whatever. It's fine. Uh with movies that are like this, like <laughs> usually it's like a small crew, mm -hmm. not a lot of actors, budget's low. But I feel like they had a lot of actors. They had who, a lot of crew. Who funded this? That's a great question. I have to do some more research on that. Because there was like a lot of people that kind of worked on it. So who's yeah. funding Birdemic? And who's funding Birdemic 2? Like who, <laughs> who was like saw the first one and was like, yo. The second one was probably fan funded because it was so good. You like, think so? Patreon. I'm curious to see what Go year. Go fund me. Bird. Ban, bird. Birdemic. Whatever. Per, the Bird movie, the second one. Yeah. How many years apart? What Four. if it was like last year? Four. Oh, you already looked? I think uh, the first one was 2010 and the next one was 2014. So it definitely could be fan funded. Possibly. Or maybe the director's just like rich. I'm not for certain when the, when the second movie was. I'm just guessing. Like, oh, okay. I, bet. Looked, <laughs> I, I thought you were I looked serious. It up earlier, but it was either 14 or. 2013. 2013. So three See, years. Close. You were pretty close. That was a good guess. I don't think they could have fan funded it then. That was definitely a no passion shot. It was definitely a passion project. I'm thinking they the director consume. has a rich parent. Possibly. Oprah Winfrey? Could be. I don't think Oprah has any kids though. But maybe she just threw him some maybe money. Maybe it's our aunt. And we are wrapping up. Any final thoughts? I do think that you should watch this movie. You should ha watch it with some of your homies just hang out it's a good watch it's just kind of fun to make fun of i would say that this movie is also good to watch with your friends with mm -hmm. your homies but also i think that if you peel back the layers it's like an onion you know it has a lot of layers and maybe it's really good if you think about it and if you it cinema is all just what you put into it you know what you put in you get back so speaking of layers i prefer bananas but okay. anyways the, i'm ben avery paris norvell yeah that's me cassie lassier signing off bye it's stove so we can cook this